local, live, and Catholic. Welcome to Morning Offering with Ron and Dave on Annunciation Radio. Here are your hosts, Ron Finn and Dave Vacheris. Ooh-wee, we made it to Wednesday. Isn't that wonderful? We're midweek, uh, and that means uh, the winds will kick up now. Yeah, well, it was supposed to start at 4 a.m., right? Uh, and I'm driving in this morning uh, because the uh, the um, wind watch was from 4 a.m. to 4 p.m., uh, but there wasn't much wind this morning, I have to say, from the time that I got up to the time that I got here, and I'm looking out the window now and not a whole lot of movement out there as it were right now. So mm-hmm. uh, we're thankful for that. Hopefully uh, hopefully it stays calm like this. You always I bet get a bit concerned when they start talking about wind advisories and all that good stuff. And not as much wind as last week, though. Right, right. We had 60-mile-an-hour gusts. It'll only be 50-mile-an-hour gusts. Oh, so that's <laughs> what know, they're calling like that. for that? Well. As, as high as that? It, it, they're they're being very cagey. They're not really saying exactly uh, how much wind we're going to have. Uh, we know it's going to be around 30 miles an hour, gusts as high as 45, yeah, 46. And look, and I get this because they did a survey, and they found that those who predicted the weather – um, beforehand were 30% right. Those mm. who waited to predict the weather till after it came, mm-hmm. people involved in that industry mm-hmm. were 57% right oh, really? on looking wow. back. Oh, okay, and yeah. So, um, you know, I, I get it. 30% to 57% all fabricated, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but we'll see <laughs> because you would think, you know, hindsight's 50 50. You ought to know uh, once something's happened, um, you know, how it, how it went down. And I get yesterday's weather correct 100% of the time. Okay, so this leads me to a story. I wasn't planning <laughs> on telling this, but it's a funny story. And it's hump day humor, after all. Mm-hmm. So there won't be any funny there, but this one is funny. Um, so I moved from Columbus, Ohio to Birmingham, Alabama when I'm just a youngster, <laughs> 21 oh, years. I had a banjo on my knee, by the way. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so I go down to Birmingham, Alabama, and I've got people from Ohio, people that I've grown up with, family members say, why in the world would you go to backward Alabama? You know, it's just nutty that you would go down to the south, the, the reputation of the southerners being what it was. And so I, I argued about uh, how, how wonderful Alabama was and how smart the people were. And as soon as I got down there, the first year that I'm there, Alabama is playing Auburn in the big national Ooh. game every year, televised, always a gigantic happening. And uh, Pat Dye is the coach of the Auburn Tigers. Mm-hmm. He is tied with the, with the mighty Alabama at the end of the game. I'm sorry, he's one touchdown behind. So if he scores a touchdown, he's going to win the game. Mm-hmm. And uh, he has it with for first and goal from the one-yard line. One-yard line, all he's got to do is get one yard. He gets in, they win the game, they beat mighty Alabama. So Pat Dye calls up a running play, straight up the middle, bam! Runs into this gigantic block of folks in mm. Alabama, and they push him back, back on the one-yard line again for second down. So what does he do? He runs it straight up the middle again. Bam! No, you're not going to get there. Third down, now he's get, he gets creative. Bam! Right up the middle again. <laughs> Fourth down, exactly the same play. Wow. Now, he runs exactly the same play four times to try to get one yard to get into the end zone, none of which work. Hmm. And so finally, they they ask him on national television, Coach, if you had it to do over again, might you think of running a different play? And Pat Dye, a college graduate of uh, the University of Auburn himself, actually said on national television, well, hindsight's 50-50. There you go. (laughs) On national television, and family members and friends called me and said, See? (laughs) <laughs> they ain't that bright <laughs> and you're going there <laughs> and i'm like yeah well okay on national television the uh, college football coach hindsight's 50 50 yes indeed <laughs> yeah i love that wisdom the late great uh, pad die <laughs> wonderful man but uh yeah didn't get didn't get it quite right on that uh, one national television interview the rest of the interviews that he did throughout the entirety of his coaching career uh, it kind of ended the same way. But in any case, yeah, yeah. Well, good. There he was go. a good coach, though. He's a very good coach. Did a great <laughs> job at Auburn. Good man, too. Very, very good for the community. So, so what do you think? 50-50. <laughs> so true. That's the uh, meteorologist credo. Yeah, right. <laughs> there you go. Why don't we get the latest news, shall Let's we? Let's do it. Good morning, Wendy. Always on. Always 100%. Thank you, gentlemen, and good morning in the WTOL 11 newsroom for Annunciation Radio. I'm Wendy Sheridan. 
Toledo police continue to get input from the public regarding safety in the glass city. They heard from residents at the Zablocki Center in North Toledo last night. If you missed that meeting, your input is welcome at a meeting tonight at Grace Church on Hill Avenue, west of Burn Road. It starts at 6 o'clock. Hollywood casino workers have agreed on a new contract that includes pay increases and raises for the next few years. The local United Steelworkers president says the new contract is clearer to members and part-time employees will no longer have to be available six days a week. Governor Mike DeWine says Norfolk Southern Railroad is responsible for the train derailment earlier this month in East Palestine, Ohio. He says according to the Public Utilities Commission, the train passing through the state was not considered highly hazardous. So the railroad was not required to notify the state about what was in the cars, which contained several dangerous chemicals. The governor says the CEO of Norfolk Southern is agreeing to pay for cleanup. This morning, child advocates are pushing Congress to take action to protect kids online. Kids face a variety of online dangers, including anxiety, depression, eating disorders, financial and sexual exploitation. Now lawmakers are considering legislation to regulate social media, with advocates urging for young people to be included in the conversation. Only five states, California, Utah, Colorado, Virginia and Connecticut, have passed Internet privacy laws. U.S. authorities have arrested four more people tied to assassinating the president of Haiti. Prosecutors say the owner of a Miami-area security company hired ex-Columbian soldiers to carry out the July 2021 attack. In total, 11 suspects are now in U.S. custody. Senator Dianne Feinstein will not seek re-election in 2024. The 89-year-old California Democrat plans to retire after finishing her term in Congress. Colleagues had grown concerned recently, especially about her memory. Consumer prices in January rose 6.4 percent over last year. The number shows that inflation is moderating at slightly less than December's increase of 6.5 percent, though it's still higher than economists' predictions. Core inflation, which excludes food and energy costs, increased at an annual rate of 5.6 percent, also higher than expected. Some analysts believe the numbers will lead to more interest rate hikes in the coming months. Ford is pausing production of its popular F-150 Lightning electric vehicle to investigate a potential battery issue. A spokesperson said the company is unaware of any incidents on the roads. This comes just a day after Ford announced it's investing $3.5 billion in a new battery plant in Michigan. Ford also says it's slashing nearly 4,000 jobs in Europe as it focuses on its USEV operations. Subway says it's exploring a possible sale of the company. The sandwich chain has been privately owned since its founding in 1965, and it has more than 35,000 locations worldwide. In a statement, Subway said there's no timetable for a sale or even if it'll go through with one. Subway is one of the world's largest restaurant chains with 37 outlets in more than 100 countries. From the WTOL 11 Weather Center, very windy today, near 60. The wind will die down later this afternoon. Rain moving in tomorrow, low 40s. Clouds and sun for Friday with a high in the low 30s. In the WTOL 11 Newsroom for Annunciation Radio, I'm Wendy Sheridan. Thank you, Wendy. Every inch of 54 degrees right now. Every inch of it. Senator Mm -hmm. Feinstein yesterday was confused when speaking to reporters as to whether the statement announcing her retirement had been put out and uh, whether she actually was retiring. Uh, they said that uh, the senator was out uh, out, out of the office mm-hmm. um, and when the, the statement was put out. That's what the confusion was. Not that she wasn't confused that she was retiring, oh, okay. which is what it appeared to be. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, I'm retiring? Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, yeah, you're retiring. Big announcement went out today. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but I was out of the office. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. Boy, I have all <laughs> kinds of confidence in our in our, uh, in our our leadership here and our mm-hmm. Congress people <laughs> and our senators. And everybody's saying on the, on the Democrat side, oh, we're just so thankful she's staying in the Senate for now. Why? I mean, come on. The, I, let's just be clear. It's not. I'm not making fun of people who ca- have cognitive uh, um, disabilities. I'm saying, give them the proper respect and, and make sure they're well taken care of. Don't put them out in the limelight mm-hmm. uh, to make it uh, make it very difficult for them. 
to bring these exactly. issues to light. When someone's having those those problems, you you minister to them. You give them the help that they need. You don't put them in frustrating situations, and you certainly don't keep them in positions of leadership yeah. where we only have a hundred of them. You know, That's only a right. hundred senators, mm-hmm. so each vote counts. Mm-hmm. We'd like to know that the uh, the person who's participating in that way is making up their own mind with clarity. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, always best to. Uh Step off the stage at the proper time rather than fall off the stage when it's, you know. Well, you know how you, the only way you can do that when cognitive ability is concerned is when those around you love you enough to assist you during that time. And sometimes we see just to keep positions of power, people stay in past their ability to do so. That's right. Time to be put out to pasture. That's up to their team and their family here, (laughs) I would think. So. All right. Wednesday is upon us. Hump Day Humor is coming. It's happening. It's going to happen whether you like it or not. Stay with us. Don't <laughs> yeah, leave. There's a bunch of good stuff before you'll that. You'll love it, yeah. <laughs> Hindsight's 50 <50/50. laughs> People are talking about Annunciation Radio. I just like listening to Annunciation Radio because it fills my cup up. Just listen to it in the drive to and from work. It just kind of fills you back up and recenters your your whole day. Annunciation Radio. Experience the incredible story of the woman who Time Magazine named the most influential Catholic woman in the United States. Born Rita Rizzo, the future mother Angelica grew up in a rough neighborhood in Canton, Ohio. Young Rita experienced abandonment, rejection, and heartache, but God touched her through a woman named Rhoda Wise. Encounter this amazing woman at the Mother Angelica Museum. Plan your visit today at motherangelicamuseum.com. Carry the home missions close to your heart by downloading the free Glen Mary Home Missioners mobile app. Glen Mary brings the Catholic faith to rural parts of Appalachia in the South where it is not effectively present. The free Glen Mary app is a one-stop shop to access daily reflections written by missioners, prayer resources, and information about mission in the United States. The app is available for iPhones and Androids. To download, search Glen Mary in your mobile devices app store or visit glenmary.org slash app. That's glenmary.org slash app. Hi, everybody. This is Father Nathan Cromley. I am the president and founder of the St. John Institute. That's S-A-I-N-T, johninstitute.org. I am excited because at the St. John Institute, we will be giving forth graduates who are both devout and savvy. Couldn't we unite the skills in the for-profit world with the passion of the nonprofit world? How do we give great workers for the church's vineyard? Young men and women with optimism, hope, and conviction necessary to open new avenues so that the gospel can flow into our modern world. The St. John Institute were dedicated to that formation with a fully accredited MBA in entrepreneurial business and a life shared with the monastic lifestyle of the community of St. John in Denver were a perfect opportunity for young people looking for a meaningful way of living. stjohninstitute.org God bless you. Catholic Radio for the Diocese of Toledo. This is Annunciation Radio. WNOC Bowling Green Toledo. WHRQ Sandusky. WRRO Eden Bryant. WFOT Lexington Mansfield. And WSHB Willard. Oh, yeah. Local, live, and Catholic. Welcome to Morning Offering with Ron and Dave on Annunciation Radio. Here are your hosts, Ron Finn and Dave Vacheris. Top of the morning to you. Uh, so glad that you are with us on this Wednesday, a Wednesday where we have the Word of the Day coming up from Dave Vacheris and Deacon Dan Breyer. Oh, I can't wait for that. Deacon Dan Breyer, if you've not had a chance yet to hear our newest uh, segment host, uh, Deacon Dan Breyer, as he covers our Wednesday morning off- our, our Word of the Day uh, segment, uh, you're you're missing out. Stay stay tuned about 10 minutes to the hour, about 50 mm-hmm. minutes from mm-hmm. now. Uh, Deacon Dan Brayer will be on. Uh, Deacon Dan is uh, in charge of the diaconate program here in the Diocese of Toledo. Mm-hmm. He was he, he continues uh, to also uh, teach at Bowling Green, uh, but also he's a musician. So mm-hmm. he's got all of these talents that he brings to bear and uh, with such a wonderful presentation style as well. But you get a little mix in. You can you can kind of hear the musician in mm-hmm. him. You can hear the professor in him. You can hear the deacon in him kind of all coming together in this trio of fabulousness. So. And let's see if he's uh, come up with a jingle for our morning offering program yet. 
Oh, yeah. No, he, he's written several, and all of them are better than anything we have. And yeah. I keep saying, Deacon Dan, <laughs> it just it surpasses everything we do. It would stick out. Yeah. You know? That's right. That's true. Write yeah. something yeah, a little more that. mediocre, and we'll see if it, we can stick that in. <laughs> hey, there's a, a new chapel um, in Atlanta. Oh, nice. Archbishop Gregory Hartmayer of Atlanta dedicated and blessed his archdiocese's new chapel while on his way to catch a flight Monday. Airline workers and travelers flying through the busiest airport in the nice. world. Hartsfield, uh, Hartsfield Jackson, Atlanta International Airport can now spend time in the presence of Christ uh, because the uh, Archdiocese of Atlanta and uh, others have uh, all gotten together and created a 24-hour-a-day, seven-day-a-week chapel right there in the terminal Nice. Eucharistic Chapel, uh, a permanent fixture at the airport. So Eucharist, I mean, with the Eucharist there, obviously. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Mm-hmm. Because we have other chapels in airports in the uh, in this country, Chicago. I know. I, I think NYC as well. A couple as, as well as a couple of others. But there are always um, chapels that are available to people of all faith, though they do hold masses in these chapels and during certain hours. Mm-hmm. But this is strictly a Eucharistic chapel. Yeah. I mean, obviously the ability to hold mass there as well, I'm sure. But uh, the fact that Jesus is there that now I will tell you in the, the chapels that I've seen in other airports, they don't they're not uh, they don't have the Eucharist there. Mm-hmm. So that that's fabulous. Pretty amazing. After Congratulations to them. That's they great. They got the final approval from the Archbishop. Now, the tabernacle was installed in November of last year, but because only travelers and airline workers can get past security to access the chapel, <laughs> the Archbishop wasn't able to officially bless it until uh, just the other day. So he went Monday. on a flight. <laughs> yeah, because he was flying out of the airport. That's funny. That's <laughs> yeah. good. All right. We want you to bless the chapel. When's the next time you'll yeah, be flying? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that's pretty good. That'll be pretty Very good. Next funny. time I... Fly through that airport, and yeah, boy, that airport is busy, and you, you kind of need that extra prayer. <laughs> yeah, kind of going from the Archbishop of Atlanta to a bishop in Nicaragua. Uh, in prison, Nicaraguan bishop deserves U.S. support. Religious freedom advocates say this from Catholic News Agency. Uh, the U.S. government must seek the release of Nicaragua's bishop, uh, Al- Alvarez, uh, sentenced to 26 years in prison for religious freedom adv- advocacy. This is the urgent message from the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom. This is crazy. Mm-hmm. So the, he gets arrested because he's out promoting religious freedom. He's calling uh, he's calling uh, the government out on their attacks on religious freedom. So mm-hmm. what does the government say? Look, we came up with a, a, an agreement with the U.S. Uh, State Department. We're just going to send all you guys to the U.S. Mm-hmm. Are you kidding me? What's this bishop? This bishop has charge over the people there. Yeah. He's not going to leave right. and say, oh, yeah, okay, well, fine. I'll go to the U.S. and then that way I won't be in prison. He said, no, no, no I'm with my people. I'm not leaving. Right. And so 26 years. They've sentenced him to 26 wow. years for speaking out against the government, uh, not being a, a patriot in their, in their uh, estimation. But what he's calling them out for is religious liberty abuses mm-hmm. and serious abuses. Yeah. And now they've called him a traitor to the homeland. Yeah. 26 years in prison. Again, I, no no uh, criticism from our, you know, to our state or about our State Department for working out the deal to get some of them out. Mm-hmm. But now we need to stand with the one who said, I'm yeah. staying. This is my homeland. These are my people. I'm their bishop. I'm not leaving. And look what the suppression in Nicaragua has done to the faithful in the church They've got the highest mass attendance yeah. anywhere, and they're the most oppressed. Yeah, and and it continues on. Alvarez has been the bishop since 2011. Matacalba, Matacalba is the, the diocese that he serves. But he's been there. I mean, he's not like he's just got there yeah. yesterday. These are his people. This is his family. These are the folks that he is put in charge of by Pope Francis. Pope Francis is the one who put him in that office, and now he continues on. I'm sure in his own estimation until the end of his life or the end of his episcopacy, Mm -hmm. which the government in Nicaragua doesn't get to make that determination. Right. That's only made by the church and our Lord as far as uh, uh, as far as those things go. So So he's standing up against them and just saying, look, I'm not I'm not going to participate. I'm not going to be flown out of here while my people remain back here to suffer. Mm. I'm going to defend them, even if that means I go to prison. We got to keep praying for him yeah, and pray them. For him. Wow, mm. incredible! All right, it is eight oh six now. Our morning offering prayer from one of our listeners. Lord Jesus, 
I unite myself to your perpetual, unceasing, universal sacrifice. I offer myself to you every day of my life and every moment of every day according to your most holy and adorable will. Since you have been the victim of my salvation, I wish to be the victim of your love. Accept my desire, take my offering, and graciously hear my prayer. Let me live for love of you. Let me die for love of you. Let my last heartbeat be an act of perfect love. Amen. We continue our prayer this morning as we invite you to please join Parents of Priests and Sarah Club Toledo Chapter as we pray for our clergy and religious. We pray for vocations and for an increase of faith so as to become a more holy diocese of Toledo. And today we pray for deacons and missionary priests. Dear Lord, we pray that the Blessed Mother wrap her mantle around your priest to follow her own words. Do whatever he tells you. May your priest have the heart of St. Joseph, Mary's most chaste spouse. May the Blessed Mother's own pierced heart inspire them to embrace all who suffer at the foot of the cross. May your priest be wholly filled with the fire of your love, seeking nothing but your greater glory and the salvation of souls. Amen. St. John Vianney, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for praying with us this morning. We of course, hold our priest dear and uh, and very high in our prayer this morning. And now we turn to Scripture. And our word for today on this Wednesday of the sixth week in Ordinary Time, our word for today on this Wednesday, February the 15th, restored our word for today, restored our word for today. We continue in our reading from the book of Genesis, now chapter 8. At the end of 40 days, Noah opened the hatch and he made that he had made in the ark, and he sent out a raven to see if the waters had lessened on the earth. It flew back and forth until the waters dried off from the earth. Then he sent out a dove to see if the waters had lessened on the earth. But the dove could not find any place to alight and perch, and it returned to him in the ark, for there was, no wa- there was water over all the earth. Putting out his hand, he caught the dove and drew it back to him inside the ark. He waited seven days more and again sent the dove out from the ark. In the evening, the dove came back to him, and there in its bill was a plucked-off olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had lessened on the earth. He waited still another seven days and then released the dove once more, and this time it did not come back. In the six hundred and first year of Noah's life, in the first month on the first day of the month, the water began to dry up on the earth. Noah then removed the covering of the ark and saw that the surface of the ground was drying up. Noah built an altar to the Lord, and choosing from every clean animal and every clean bird, he offered burnt offerings on the altar. When the Lord smelled the sweet odor, he said to himself, Never again will I doom the earth because of man, since the desires of man's hearts are evil from the start, nor will I ever again strike down all living beings as I have done. As long as the earth lasts, sea time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. Our responsorial psalm, Psalm 116. To you, Lord, I will offer a sacrifice of praise. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good that he has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all of his people. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all of his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Our gospel acclamation, Alleluia, Alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts, that we may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. Alleluia, Alleluia. Our Holy Gospel from Mark, chapter 8. When Jesus and his disciples arrived at Bethsaida, people brought to him a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. Putting spittle on his eyes, he laid his hands on the man and asked, Do you see anything? Looking up, the man replied, 
I see people looking like trees and walking. Then he laid hands on the man's eyes a second time, and he saw clearly. His sight was restored, and he could see everything distinctly. Then he sent him home and said, Do not even go into the village. Mm. Restored our word for today. We begin first with our Holy Father's thoughts regarding today's gospel reading. He shared these at his Angelus address uh, on, the, on Sunday, March the 26th, 2017. With this miracle, Jesus manifests himself, and he manifests himself to us as the light of the world. We are all in need of a new light, that of faith, which Jesus has given us. Indeed, that blind man in the gospel, by regaining his sight, is open to the mystery of Christ. If I were to ask you, do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Do you believe that he can change your heart? Do you believe that he can show reality as he sees it, not as we see it? Do you believe that he is light, that he gives us the true light? What does it mean to have the true light, to walk in light? First of all, it means abandoning false lights, the cold, vain light of prejudice against others, because prejudice distorts reality and ladens us with aversion to those whom we judge without mercy and condemn without appeal. Another false light, because it is seductive and ambiguous, is that of self-interest. If we value men and things on the basis of usefulness to us, of pleasure, of prestige, we are not truthful in our relationships and situations. And may this new illumination transform us in attitude and action, so that we too, beginning with our poverty, our narrow-mindedness, may be bearers of the ray of light of Christ, may be bearers of a ray of light of Christ. These false lights seductive and ambiguous is that of self-interest. If we value men and things on the basis of usefulness to us, of pleasure, of prestige, we are not truthful in our relationships and in our situations. Wow. And also he, he points out as a false light prejudice. And again, our, our word for today, restore, but what keeps coming to my mind as I read this is at some point in time, in, in actual time, uh, our, our life on this earth will end. And we'll draw our last breath and we'll stand before the Lord. And when we stand before him and see him as he truly is with faces unveiled, it will be just him and us. That's it. And all the people that we had tried, tried to please, everyone that we had... Uh, uh, in some way, uh, either used for our own self gain or in some way uh, tried to impress during this lifetime, none of them will be there with us, just us and the Lord. And everything will come down to how we lived our lives in service of Him and, and in service of one another. And that's it, that there will be this idea that what, what, where is love? How, how is love measured in our hearts? How has it been lived out in our lives? Not self-love, but love for others and love for Christ. And so we have this opportunity as we're in the flesh, like the blind man in the gospel today, in the gospel reading today, Jesus goes to him. And I find it very interesting, putting spittle on his eyes, he laid his hands on the man and asked, do you see anything? Looking up, the man replied, I see people looking like trees and walking. And you think, well, why? Jesus just, he has his hands on him. He's obviously praying for his healing. He's interacting. He's intervening for his healing, I should say. He himself is conducting that healing. But the man is given it only partially. So at first, when Jesus asks him, he says, yes, I can see, but it looks like there are trees walking around. You know, not 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 with clarity. He's not seen with clarity yet. Then he lays his hand on the man's eyes a second time. And he saw clearly. His sight was restored and he could see everything distinctly. Why in two steps? Because it, most likely it's what the man needed. He needed to progress from one thing to the next. This healing of this man who is blind was done perfectly, absolutely perfectly. So you can't think that the first time that Jesus says, how's it going? And the man says, well, I see, but I see as if people, as if trees are, are darting about, not, not human beings. 
And then he lays his hands on him again and he sees with clarity. That was a perfect healing, absolutely perfect for that man and for the testimony of that man and for the testimony of what would be written down in the gospel of Mark chapter eight for us. So what is it that's perfect about it? That these things take time. That as we walk in our relationship with the Lord, as we're asking him to heal certain things, when we're asking him to restore ourselves, restore our families, restore our communities, restore our world, sometimes it's going to be like we're looking about at trees that are walking around. And the Lord is saying, do you still trust me? Do you still believe that I can bring about clarity? Do you still believe that I'm going to give you eyes that absolutely see perfectly? Yes, it's on its way, but not yet. Restoration is happening, but it's not complete yet. Isn't that our life? Isn't that the life that we live in this world? That we are moving toward perfection in an imperfect place? That we are called to a higher way of living? Even to uh, being perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect, says Jesus. He wasn't kidding. (laughs) And so he says, look, you're on your way to that. If you give yourself over to that, if you are faithful to that, I'm going to bring you to that place. But at times it's going to seem as if you're living your life surrounded by trees that are walking around. There isn't clarity yet, but clarity is coming. There isn't full restoration yet, but restoration is coming. There isn't a complete healing yet, but healing is coming. You know, death and sin, I mean, death and uh, disease and all of these violences that we've experienced and are experiencing entered into the world through sin. We still struggle with that sin nature. So that restoration is still taking place in us. But we are heading toward that second opportunity when Jesus puts his hands on the man's eyes and then he sees clearly, fully restored. And that's what I pray for each of us today, brothers and sisters. That's what I go before the Lord to pray for uh, for myself today. Lord, you know that I love you. You know that I want to serve you. You know that I believe in you. I know that you are capable of doing anything. I'm just not sure what you want to do with me. (laughs) I'm not sure what you want to do with my, my situation. I'm not sure. I know how much you love everybody made in your image and likeness. I'm just not sure how much you love me from time to time. And this is where we're at with the Lord, right? So that full restoration is coming. So, Father, you know where we are. You know how much we want to serve you. We give ourselves over to you. We ask that by the stirring of the Spirit, we would continue to grow in our knowledge of you and in our trust in you, in our faith in you. We thank you for the restoration that has happened in our lives. We thank you for the full restoration that is on its way. Father, we confess that at times we see things darting about as trees, walking about. We ask for additional clarity that we might be better servants of yours as we come to know and love and serve you better. Restore our word for today. And uh, as we get closer and closer to Lent, that's a great thing. We all need to be restored. We need mm. that restoration. Mm. Mm. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all of his people, our psalm says today. Mm. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the courts of the house of the Lord in your midst, O Jerusalem. Mm. Testify, brothers and sisters, that restoration is happening. Restoration continues to take place. And restoration will find its completion in you if you're faithful to serve the Lord. Excellent. Deacon Dan Brayer will offer his reflection coming up in about half an hour. Looking forward to that. Definitely. And uh, also looking forward to a chat with uh, Bob Boyer from the Knights of Columbus. We're going to kind of get an update from him on the ultrasound project that they're uh, working on. And uh, let's see, what else? Oh, yeah, that little thing called Hump Day Humor. Hump Day Humor is coming up. Looking forward to that. Don't go away. After that, we've got uh, Heroes of the Faith, a little I Bet You Didn't Know That. I know I didn't, as as Ron said. Wonderful interview with Bob Boyer and Deacon Dan Brayer. So stick with us. 
Thank you, gentlemen, and good morning in the WTOL 11 newsroom for Annunciation Radio. I'm Wendy Sheridan. Toledo police continue to get input from the public regarding safety in the Glass City. They heard from residents at the Zablocki Center in North Toledo last night. If you missed that meeting, your input is welcome at a meeting tonight at Grace Church on Hill Avenue, west of Burn Road. It starts at 6 o'clock. Hollywood casino workers have agreed on a new contract. It includes pay increases and raises for the next few years. The local United Steel Workers president says the new contract is clearer to members and part-time employees will no longer have to be available six days a week. Governor Mike DeWine says Norfolk Southern Railroad is responsible for the train derailment earlier this month in East Palestine, Ohio. He says according to the Public Utilities Commission, the train passing through the state was not considered highly hazardous. So the railroad was not required to notify the state about what was in the cars, which contained several dangerous chemicals. The governor says the CEO of Norfolk Southern is agreeing to pay for cleanup. This morning, child advocates are pushing Congress to take action to protect kids online. Kids face a variety of online dangers, including anxiety, depression, eating disorders, financial and sexual exploitation. Now lawmakers are considering legislation to regulate social media, with advocates urging for young people to be included in the conversation. Only five states, California, Utah, Colorado, Virginia and Connecticut, have passed Internet privacy laws. U.S. authorities have arrested four more people tied to assassinating the president of Haiti. Prosecutors say the owner of a Miami-area security company hired ex-Columbian soldiers to carry out the July 2021 attack. In total, 11 suspects are now in U.S. custody. Senator Dianne Feinstein will not seek re-election in 2024. The 89-year-old California Democrat plans to retire after finishing her term in Congress. Colleagues had grown concerned recently, especially about her memory. Consumer prices in January rose 6.4 percent over last year. The number shows that inflation is moderating at slightly less than December's increase of 6.5 percent, though it's still higher than economists' predictions. Core inflation, which excludes food and energy costs, increased at an annual rate of 5.6 percent, also higher than expected. Some analysts believe the numbers will lead to more interest rate hikes in the coming months. Ford is pausing production of its popular F-150 Lightning electric vehicle to investigate a potential battery issue. A spokesperson said the company is unaware of any incidents on the roads. This comes just a day after Ford announced it's investing $3.5 billion in a new battery plant in Michigan. Ford also says it's slashing nearly 4,000 jobs in Europe as it focuses on its USEV operations. Subway says it's exploring a possible sale of the company. The sandwich chain has been privately owned since its founding in 1965, and it has more than 35,000 locations worldwide. In a statement, Subway said there's no timetable for a sale or even if it'll go through with one. Subway is one of the world's largest restaurant chains with 37 outlets in more than 100 countries. From the WTOL 11 Weather Center, very windy today, near 60. The wind will die down later this afternoon. Rain moving in tomorrow, low 40s. Clouds and sun for Friday with a high in the low 30s. In the WTOL 11 Newsroom for Annunciation Radio, I'm Wendy Sheridan. 55 degrees now. Thank you very much, Wendy. Appreciate that. It is that time. It's time for Hump Day Humor. You've been waiting and waiting, hoping that you might be away from the uh, speakers at this point, but you're not. (laughs) And so here we go. Robert has... I got to tell you, we got a great crop of jokes today. Well, a crop means that they're ready to go. Uh, have they just been planted? Because I, I'm not sure I'm going to. I'm, I'm not going to testify that. We're still Robert, harvesting. Robert asked the televangelist to pray for his hearing. After three minutes of prayer and some violent shaking and trying to push him over backwards, the preacher asked, "How's your hearing now?" Robert replied, "I don't know. It's scheduled to take place at the courthouse on Tuesday." <laughs> there you go. All right. All right. Old Fred had been a religious man who was in the hospital near death. The family called their preacher to stand with them, and as he stood next to the bed, uh, old Fred's condition appeared to deteriorate, and he motioned frantically for something to write on. 
The pastor lovingly handed him a pen and a piece of paper, and old Fred used his last bit of energy to scribble a note. Then he died. The preacher thought it was best not to look at the note at the time, so he placed it in his jacket pocket. At the funeral, when he was finished with the message, he realized that he was wearing the same jacket that he was wearing when old Fred died. He said, you know, old Fred handed me a note just before he died. I haven't looked at it yet, but knowing Fred, I'm sure there's a word of inspiration there for all of us. Mm. He opened the note and read out loud, Hey, you're standing on my oxygen tube. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, I, I, I almost think that will be a sure. <laughs> Jesus uh, says, table for 26, please, goes into and uh, says to the waiter, uh, table for 26, please. The waiter said, but there are only 13 of you. Jesus said, yeah, but we're all going to be sitting on the same side. Uh, yeah. So yeah. it's a table for 26. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Imagine, if you will, an atheist stuck at a green light behind a car with a honk if you love Jesus sticker. Okay. Think about that. An atheist in a, at a green light, stuck behind a car at a green light, and the, the, the car has a honk if you love Jesus bumper yeah. sticker on it. That's a quandary. That's, that's, what they, that's what you call a quandary that's right there. That's very funny. A bus full of ugly people crashes. Everyone dies and goes to heaven. Again, a bus full of ugly people crashes. Everyone dies and goes to heaven, forming a line at the pearly gates. St. Peter is there and says, before you get into heaven, you can get you all get one wish. The first person in line says, I wish I was beautiful. Poof, they're beautiful. They get into heaven. The second guy says, I wish I was beautiful too. Poof, they're beautiful. They can get into heaven. The guy at the end of the line starts to chuckle. The line gets shorter and shorter with everyone asking to be beautiful. Poof, they're beautiful. They get into heaven. The guy at the end of the line starts to laugh harder and harder until he's finally at the pearly gates with St. Peter. St. Peter asked the man, what on earth is so funny? And the man, through his tears of laughter, finally manages manages to say, "Make them all ugly again." <laughs> <laughs> That's his final wish. There oh, you go. Good, good. <laughs> now this one, I like quotes. You know, I like quotes. Oh yeah. So I'll give you the quote, and then I'll tell you who said it. I can't end my messages with "Love Shack" because the fi- the B fifty twos ruined that for me. Shaquille yeah, O'Neal. Right. Yeah. 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 So you can't say love Shaq. Yeah. 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 There you go. Oh, yeah. B fifty two's dog on you. <laughs> I had a few from the dad jokes calendar. Love right. it. Uh, I was trying to come up with a joke about penguins, but then I realized it wouldn't fly. <laughs> no, like that. Uh, no, why didn't Mozart like chickens? I don't know. Whenever he asked them who was the best composer, they just said Bach. Bach. <laughs> oh, very good. I like that. Mm-hmm. So let's see here. Um, Let's see, did you hear about the group of monkeys that were sharing an Amazon account? Hey, hey, were the monkeys? No. They were prime mates. Oh, oh, no. Hey, have I told you guys about my sister, Teresa? No. I love her. To the moon and back, she's so kind and welcoming, a great mother and wife. Unfortunately, as they say, she's not the sharpest tool in the shed. Here's an example. She had to go to the doctor yesterday. When she arrived, she ran into the doctor's office and said, Doctor, doctor, you have to help me. Everywhere I touch on my body, it hurts. The doctor replied, show me. So she poked her ankle and screamed of pain. Then she poked her knee and yelled, ow. She poked her forehead and screamed again. Teresa was about to continue when the doctor said, that's enough. Let me think this over. He thought for a minute and said, I think I know what your problem is. You broke your finger. (laughs) (laughs) I I got one for you. I I wanted to do for sports yesterday, but I saw it later in the day. So. Uh, yesterday was the anniversary, 1976, the Atlanta Braves, you know, your baseball team, sent Valentine's Day cards to their season ticket holders in the media to apologize for their last place finish, <laughs> 40 and a half games behind the Ooh. Cincinnati Reds. Ooh. Wow. Their car read, Rose is a red, Morgan's won two, they finished first, like we wanted to. But last year's behind us. We're happy to say now we're tied for first. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> there you go. That's pretty good. I like it. What do you call a bee that can't make up its mind? Uh, what do you? Uh, what do you? A maybe. A may- maybe, of course. <laughs> a maybe. Sometimes I That's think. Pretty good. Sometimes I think about all the people I've lost along the way. Sometimes I think about all the people I've lost along the way. I should have never been a tour guide. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my. oh my! Oh right. my! So a farmer here. goes to the market, sells his horse for two hundred dollars. I'm sorry, two thousand dollars. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and a man buys it from him. The farmer says he'll deliver it to a man in a week's time. But halfway through the week, the horse dies. Mm. Now, the farmer offers to refund the man's money, but the man chooses to buy it anyway. Next week, the farmer sees and asks the man what he did with the dead horse. 
man said, oh, I held a lucky draw, $50 for a chance to win a horse. 100 people entered, and I collected $5,000. The farmer, shocked, asked, but wasn't anyone upset with a horse? The man replies, oh, yes, only the winner, but I refunded him his $50. Oh, my (laughs) gosh. (laughs) Now, here's one that uh, I resemble this remark. I married my wife for her looks. But not the one she's giving me lately. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. There All right, let's see. Go. I wanted to sue. Um, I tried to sue the airline for losing my luggage. I lost my case. Mm. <laughs> That's good. I like that. <laughs> Is it ignorance or apathy that's destroying the world today? Mm. I don't know, and I really don't care. <laughs> that's good. I like that. I wasn't, I wasn't originally going to get a brain transplant, but then I changed my mind. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> I'm amazing at managing my credit card because my bank keeps sending me messages saying my account is outstanding. <laughs> there you go. How can you argue with that, right? There you go. All right, there's a little hump day humor. Thanks, uh, producer Tim, for providing some of the frivolity there. Appreciate yeah, that. Sir. See what happens? The lame jokes all came from me, by the way. And me. We're going to keep it going. An equal share. We'll, we'll be, be back. right back. Bob Boyer coming up. Hi, this is Pat Odie Murray from The Virtuous Life. I hope you will join us this week as we talk to Teresa Hodgins. Teresa wrote an article on course on St. Thomas Aquinas for beginners. So join us Mondays and Saturdays at 4 p.m. here on Annunciation Radio. This is Dale Alquist with a Chesterton Minute. Have you ever heard someone say, we need change? G.K. Chesterton says, Modern men are not familiar with the rational arguments for tradition, but they are familiar, almost wearily familiar, with all the arguments for change. We should not be too quick to favor the new over the old. We should never tear down a wall unless we know why it was put up. If we don't understand the purpose of a tradition, we should first learn that purpose and then decide if the tradition needs to be changed or if we are the ones who need to change. Maybe the tradition is right, and we are wrong. Want more than a minute? Visit us at chesterton.org. Jesus promises us, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door... Then I will enter his house and dine with him, and he with me. Jesus longs to be invited into our hearts and into our homes. We see firsthand that lives are transformed through the enthronement of the Sacred Heart. Open the door and welcome his heart. Visit welcomehisheart.com to learn more about this life-changing devotion. Send your prayer intentions for us to include in the Daily Divine Mercy Chaplet. Click Prayer Request on the Annunciation Radio app, call our prayer line, 740-616-8111, or email us, info at AnnunciationRadio.com. Local, live, and Catholic. Welcome to Morning Offering with Ron and Dave on Annunciation Radio. Here are your hosts, Ron Finn and Dave Vacheris. Well, welcome back. Glad you could uh, be with us on this Wednesday. And uh, we are sharing our studio space with our old friend, Bob Boyer, who's in studio with us right now. Of course, uh, with the uh, Knights of Columbus Council 11370 and a terrific fundraiser that we uh, clued you in on a while back. Um, and it's it's all about acquiring a new and uh, technologically advanced ultrasound for Heartbeat of Toledo. And Bob, welcome to the studio. Get in real close to that microphone. Thank you, Ron. And, and I'm sure that uh, Heartbeat of Toledo thanks you also because they really need this ultrasound. Well, you're the one that's, that's putting all the efforts together. And I know, uh, you know, with the, uh, the, the, the dinners and, and the different collections that you've done, and we've talked about it on the air as well. So how is it going so far? Well, we're over halfway there. The total cost is 40000 Hmm. And if we raise the 20000 locally, it is matched dollar for dollar by our Supreme Council. Wow. So we're looking to raise 20000 and we're just, I believe, just a little over 11000 now. So we'd like to accelerate it and get this done, get that unit working for them because it's, it's a replacement unit. They've got an old one that's kind of on its last legs. And, of course, the new ones are... 
the new ones are just so far superior. It's like looking at a snapshot. I remember when my my kids were born. You you looked at the ultrasound and they point. Look at that. That's yeah. You know, that's the head and that's the arm. And but now you, you look there. It's just like a snapshot. Yeah, now you look like you're sitting at a portrait studio. I, I know my recently born grandson. I'm looking at his ultrasound picture, going, "Oh my goodness!" I mean, this is him. You can see the features. You can see everything. Uh, tell us how can people participate? How can they be a part of raising this last needed uh, nine thousand dollars or so? Yes, yeah, so they they can just send a check and make it out to K of C Ultrasound because the money has to come through the KSC for us to get the match. Okay. So if you send it. To, make it out the heartbeat but you don't get a match on it mm, okay. so checks can be made out to k of c ultrasound and they can be sent to 1744 cambridge park east maumee 43537 that's 1744 cambridge park east maumee ohio or if you forget that send us saint saint joe's maumee 104 west broadway and That'll get to me also. Attention, Knights of Columbus. Do what you can. $9,000 away from being able to purchase a $40,000 ultrasound machine mm-hmm. uh, for the benefit of Heartbeat of uh, heartbeat of Toledo. Toledo. There you go. Heartbeat and of Toledo. How is the check made out, Bob? K of C ultrasound. Just K-O-F-C ultrasound. Okay, very good. And uh, obviously, uh, you're, getting, you're making a lot of inroads there, so let's get us over the hump here. Right, we like we like to get this wrapped up as soon as possible, and I know there's a lot of fundraising going on, but this is really important. It can save a lot of young lives. Mm. Right. Thank you, Bob. Thanks for what you're doing. Thanks to Heartbeat of Toledo, lives are being changed, saved, and you can participate. KFC Ultrasound. Just send that to uh, Saint Joseph Catholic Church in uh, Maumee. Attention, Knights of Columbus, and uh, we'll get there. Yeah, thanks for stopping in on that wonderful, wonderful cause. Uh, we've got some winds going on out there. We've got a wind advisory in effect, and uh, that's going to be until 4 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, we're going to see southwest winds 20 to 25 to 30 with gusts up to 50 miles an hour expected. Uh, so pretty mild out there right now, though. We're looking at 55 degrees, just a few clouds. Of course, the winds, man, it's going to make it feel like 50. Yeah, right. All the <laughs> way down to 50. We're right. no, no complaints about the temperature, of course, but... Uh, be careful with those winds, particularly with small dogs, uh, small animals, that kind mm-hmm. of thing. Uh, uh, groceries. Skinny people. Umbrellas. Yeah. Skinny people. Find find a little heftier <laughs> person that you can hang on to, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hey, I got a little. I bet you didn't know oh, that. Good. I know I didn't for today. How about this one? There's a village called Dull. Now, there are a lot of villages that are, are Dull, mm-hmm. a lot of cities that are Dull. But this is a village that's actually named Dull. Mm. It's in uh, Perthshire, uh, Scotland. And to be honest, it doesn't sound, uh, you know, very, they're very thrilling. There's only one street of houses and a church. That's it. That's all that's in this village. Slightly less dull is the fact that it's twinned with boring USA and bland <laughs> Australia. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So there you go. So they twin. And how do you twin with two others? So I thought, yeah, that's. that's so I have the, a question for you. Quick yeah. one. If they're dull in Scotland, then what about somebody who doesn't dress very colorfully? Are they drab? Two and it's drab and dull, drab and dull. <laughs> could be, could be. Um, I'm not sure about that one, but that would they would have to twin Food with them thought. too. And so no, we've already got two. The two's too many. If you chew, if you chill your onions, you won't cry. Now this is a public service announcement. We like to do some of these oh, uh, mixed in as well. There's nothing worse than chopping an onion and bursting it into tears. Not because you're sad for the onion, but because your eyes start to sting. Anybody, have you all experienced oh, yeah. that? Oh, yeah. Here, no, I never really eat onions, so yeah. oh. if I did, I would You've never cry chopped too. one? No, have you, I, I've, not, I've never have you chopped one. Oh, I'm chopped. not really known as a, a cook in the in the kitchen. Well, thanks for playing along. There. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I can eat, but I, well, I can't there, really cook. I was going to say a simple uh, solution is to, and I'm going to give you the trick, but the other solution is to do what Tim does and never chop That's one. Right, yeah. A simple solution <laughs> is to smart. stick your onion in the freezer. This is true. Mm-hmm. Stick your onion in the freezer for about 15 minutes beforehand. Hmm. This will prevent the acid enzymes working properly and stop you from tearing up. Wow. So if you know you're going to chop an onion, you take it, you put it in the freezer for 15 minutes, 
and then you chop it up after that. Now, there is the side effect that it, it might be a little bit frozen, and you might cut your finger off. But you won't. <laughs> you might cry over that, but you're not yeah, going to cry yeah. from the enzymes of the onion. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's just a small little yeah. detail there. <laughs> now, here's the other side of the spectrum. Cold baseballs. So we're looking at an onion. It's best if it's frozen a little bit. Mm-hmm. Cold baseballs are worse than warm ones. Did mm-hmm. you know this? Baseballs will fly further if they're warm than if they're cold. Hmm. That's because the warmer ones weigh less and therefore have less air resistance. So next time you want a good game of baseball, pop your ball in a microwave. Don't actually. <laughs> uh, but it is it is nice to have it warm, not cold. Don't put it in the microwave. That was just a joke. Is that what um, baseball does to uh, try to inflate the home run numbers? <laughs> yeah, it must be. And, and then you can also see why they try. Look, we know you go to a cold weather football game. And that football does not go as far That's on those on those true. field goal attempts and that kind of thing. So it works in baseball, too. I got one other fact. You know, they rub up the baseballs with this special mud. It's from, uh, I think, the Ohio River. It, it, yeah. it's, it's somewhere in Kentucky. It, it, they rub it up with that kind of mud because you can do tricks with a shine ball. They used to do that way back in the early part of the, uh, the, uh, the 20th century where they sh- had a shine ball. You could do tricks with that that you can't do once this mud is put over the ball. Oh, there Whoa, you go. Interesting. So now learning all kinds of good stuff. And yeah. there you go. There's a little, I bet you didn't know that. I know I didn't. And now for Heroes of the Faith. Blood no, you- from Kentucky. <laughs> Got to keep that in mind. Got to be from Kentucky. And, uh, and uh, Blessed from uh, Poland. And you know uh, how I am with uh, with certain names. Yeah. And, um, you know, the Lithuania, uh, Poland, Slovakia. Give me an A for I, I, have a, I have a hard time with some of these. But you've heard of this guy, Blessed Michael I'm going to say uh, Sopako. It might be Sopacho. S-O-P-O-C-K-O. Okay. Uh, He began his studies at a seminary in uh, Lithuania in 1910, ordained a priest in 1914, served as a parish priest in Vilnius and military chaplain in World War I Mm. from 1914 to 1918, assigned to Vilnius and to Warsaw, Poland. He earned his doctorate in theology in 1926. He was spiritual director um, of the seminary there, and a professor of pastoral theology uh, in 1928. Now, beginning in the mid-1933 uh, area, he became the spiritual director and confessor of St. Uh, Faustina Kowalska. Oh, wow. Okay, mm-hmm. that's how we know. That's why right. we know him. He arranged uh, for um, uh, the painting of the Divine Mercy image in uh, 1934, and in 1935 he began preaching on the Divine Mercy and in 1936 wrote the first booklet about mm. it. From 1942 to 1944, Father Michael was one of many who went into hiding to avoid <laughs> the occupying Nazi forces. He founded the Sisters of Merciful Jesus based on the Divine Mercy messages received by St. Faustina. In 1959, the Vatican forbade the Divine Mercy devotion and censured him. But in 1965, uh, the Archbishop... Of course, you know, Karol Wichowa of uh, Krakow, Poland, future Pope John Paul II, reopened the investigation and led to the reversal of the ban. He uh, died on the 15th of February, 1975. So, blessed Michael Sapako, pray, pray for, us. for us. Thank you, Ron. Welcome to Catechism for Today with Father Nicholas Weibel. Lessons for daily life from the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Sister Theo Bauman was asked what she thought was her image of God. And this was her enthusiastic answer. My people in life have blessed me with multiple images of the living God. God is bread when you're hungry, water when you're thirsty, a harbor from a storm. God is a father of the fatherless, a mother to the motherless. God is my sister, my brother, my leader, my guide, my teacher, my comforter, my friend. God is a way maker and a burden bearer, a heart fixer and a mind regulator. God is my doctor who never lost a patient, my lawyer who never lost a case, my chaplain who never lost a battle. God is my all, in all, my everything. Now what does the Catechism have to say about this? Paragraph 41. All creatures bear a certain resemblance to God, most especially man, created in image and likeness of God. The manifold perfections of creatures, their truth, their goodness, their beauty, all reflect the infinite perfection of God. Consequently, 
We can name God by taking his creatures' perfections as our starting point. For from the greatness and beauty of created things comes a corresponding perception of their creator. In paragraph 2639, Praise is a form of prayer which recognizes most immediately that God is God. It lauds God for his own sake and gives him glory, quite beyond what he does, but simply because he is. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Local, live, and Catholic. Welcome to Morning Offering with Ron and Dave on Annunciation Radio. Here are your hosts, Ron Finn and Dave Vacheris. And we are back this Wednesday version of Morning Offering with Ron and Dave. We've gotten through Hump Day Humor. Actually got a, a listener response to that. I'm really excited about this. Uh, what do you call two, com- two so-called comedians? Wait, wait a minute. What do you call two so-called comedians and a wannabe stuck in a room together? A hump day humor. Yeah. What? That's pretty good. I, is that? A, I think that's offensive. Oh, no. I, I take that as a compliment. He's laughing with us. Who, I see. Who's He's the wannabe? I guess us. I'm the wannabe, but <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. Well, the so-called comedians. I guess that's us. So there you go. Thank you, so Jim. Called. Appreciate that. Always, <laughs> always a kind always word. Always appreciate the encouragement. Yeah. <laughs> <That's right>. Oh, my. <laughs> Uh, I love that feedback. So keep them coming, or keep them to yourself. Uh, you know, whichever one works for you. I think, but uh, a lot uh, happening. I just want to get to a couple of things real quick. Tonight's tonight, six thirty to eight thirty p.m. If you're in Bluffton, you need to stop by uh, St. Mary uh, for the night of healing. It's worship, word, and healing with Father Lewin uh, Dow and Father James Brown. So uh, it's, it's nice to have these uh, at different places uh, at different times. So tonight's tonight there in uh, Bluffton. And then uh, tomorrow, we're going to be broadcasting live. We're going to be on location at the Catholic Business Network for the next breakfast program tomorrow morning, a free will offering at St. Patrick of Heather Downs Holy Family Center right there on Heather Downs Boulevard in Toledo. Doors open 7 a.m., networking and breakfast at 7.30. It's a nice breakfast, too. And the program starting at 8 a.m. Uh, with Speaker Patrick Noveski, one of America's most accomplished Catholic communicators. He'll be speaking on St. John Paul II and the Dignity of Work. Mm. And then you can stick around after that for the optional Mass at 845 if you'd like. But register online. Uh, Catholic Charities website would be the best place to do that because the Eventbrite link is, is I, I don't think I can read it. Yeah. Uh, but if you go to uh, catholiccharitiesnwo.org, there you go. uh, you'll be able to do that. And then coming up on Sunday evening of Eucharistic Revival, Bishop Daniel E. Thomas We'll be leading this uh, Eucharistic Adoration and Prayer at St. Mary Norwalk. That's from 3 to 4.30 on Sunday afternoon. And then uh, just looking ahead a little bit, uh, February 24th through the 26th, the 10th Annual Women's Retreat at Our Lady of the Pines Retreat Center in Fremont. And on Saturday, uh, well, first of all, on Friday, February 24th, it's fish fry. Oh, wow. Yeah, Isn't fish fries are, back. are coming, yeah. All you can eat at the Port yeah. Clinton Knights of Columbus. Uh, so dinners are $14 each. drive through is available. And uh, you can uh, you can also dine in. So uh, right there, the 2023 Lenten fish fries at Port Clinton, sponsored by the Knights of Columbus. We're going to be getting back uh, face-to-face um, get-togethers with, uh, with those fish fries. So. Mm-hmm. That's going to be fabulous. The ones that have uh, been happening, you know, the last couple of years, we either had to just stop by and pick them up or um, that kind of thing. But Dine In should be back in earnest. So should be fun. Can't wait. Mm-hmm. And our word for today on this February 15th, Wednesday of the sixth week in Ordinary Time, our word for today, Restored, Restored, our word for today, and here to discuss it, share his thoughts with us regarding it, is the one, the only, Deacon Dan Brer. Good morning, Deacon Dan. Can't wait to hear uh, your thoughts, your ideas regarding today's readings and our word for today. Good morning, Dave and Ron. Good we are morning. exactly one week from Ash Wednesday. How about that? Ooh, mm-hmm. Man, time flies, I'm telling you. You know, I was thinking about when you're talking about the fish fries, you know, we all love fish, but isn't it really all about the the sauces that you put on it, mm. you know? Mm. <laughs> um, 
But at any rate, um, yeah, I always look forward to this time of year. And actually, you know, it, it seems odd to look forward to Lent, but it's mm. an opportunity for us to, to turn things around and to, to rethink who we are. Um, and actually, when it comes to turning things around, that's kind of that fits right in with this word of the day, restored. Um, when I when I thought about that word, I was recalling um, when I was growing up, my dad <clears throat> was a woodworker, mm. um, and uh, he was a police officer, but he was a woodworker on the side. And people would bring him uh, pieces of furniture. Typically, they'd bring like a table or a chair or something. And, you know, this would be a maybe an antique table that had been painted over white and gray and all kinds of things. People tried to antique the furniture. Mm. And um, they would give it to, to him and ask him to refinish the furniture. And he'd start off by stripping it, and he would scrub it, and he would sand it and stain it and finish it and, and so forth. And in the end, by the time he finished with all of that, the furniture looked like it did the day that it was made. Mm. The furniture was restored to what it originally looked like. And so <clears throat> that's my image of the word restore, to take something that originally looked like something, has been tarnished over the years, if you will, and now is being put back to what it was in the first place. And I think that the word restored has a lot of implications. Uh, in the Catholic Church, biblically. Um, for example, uh, I remember in the uh, 1970s, after the Second Vatican Council, when we put the um, sign of peace in, into the Mass. And I remember some of the pushback people were giving at the time, saying, oh, you know, what is this, a new agey thing that we're all turning and shaking hands to the person next to us? Um, it, well, it wasn't a 70s thing. You know, this, this idea of a sign of peace in the Mass was centuries old. Uh, we have... Uh, write church documents from the 4th century showing that 1,700 years ago, the idea of giving the person next to you a sign of peace was an, an important part of the liturgy. But it had gotten lost over the years, and what the Second Vatican Council did is they didn't invent it, they restored it. They put it back to like it was. Um, same thing with the diaconate, you know, the permanent diaconate. Once that came back in, into being in the, in the uh, 1970s, Again, a lot of confusion about that. What is a, a permanent deacon, and how come I didn't grow up with that? But the fact of the matter is, St. Stephen was a permanent deacon. St. Francis of Assisi was a permanent deacon, and that was in the year 1200. Mm -hmm. The diaconate had sort of fallen away, and all the Second Vatican Council did was to restore, to bring back like it was, that original order uh, that had been lost. So there are biblical references throughout that use this word, um, just give you a couple of examples that sort of leads us into today's gospel. Um, Jeremiah chapter 30, it, uh, God says, Indeed, the days are coming when I will restore the fortunes of my people, Israel and Judah, and I'll bring them back to the land of their ancestors. So again, they left the land, I'm going to restore and put them back to the way that they were. Um, Job chapter 42 says, The Lord restored the prosperity of Job after he had prayed for his friends, and the Lord even gave to Job twice as much as he had before. So Job had it taken away, God puts it back. Um, first Peter, Peter says, the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory through Christ Jesus, will himself restore and strengthen you after you've suffered a little. So we get this, this kind of consistent message throughout the Bible of, um, we, we start out a certain way, we lose our way for whatever reason, and then God works to restore us, to bring us back to where we were. And <clears throat> that's the, the word, the key word in today's gospel. It's the story of Jesus healing a blind man. And it's kind of an odd story, because Mark is the only evangelist, actually, that tells this story. Um, and it's a very short one, but the, the blind man uh, is brought to Jesus, and Jesus puts spittle on his eyes, and he lays his hands on the man, and he says, do you see anything? And the man says, well, I see people, but they look like trees that mm -hmm. are walking. And so Jesus lays his hands on the man again, and then he sees clearly his sight was restored. Mm. Um, at first glance, when you first hear the story, it's kind of like you get the sense that Jesus like didn't didn't do it right the first yeah. time. <laughs> you know, almost like Jesus is laying his hands on him, and the guy says, "I don't really see very well yet." Jesus says, "Oh shoot, let me try that again." Um, well, there, there's I think more underlying this story. First of all, the the Bible says that the man's sight was restored. So we have to believe that he originally could see, and somehow he's lost his sight, and now it's going gonna, it's gonna to come back. Um, now, either literally or figuratively, because 
Um, the, the, the issue that seems to be going on here is that this guy just doesn't have very much faith. Um, if we read carefully into the very first sentence of the gospel, it says people brought him to him mm. a blind man, and they begged Jesus to touch him. Notice the blind man didn't come to Jesus. Mm. He didn't say, can you heal me? He was brought there by some somebody else. Um, so we have this sense that the people were almost dragging him to Jesus, saying, hey, he can heal you, and I don't think the guy had faith, he didn't trust it. Mm. And we see various places throughout the Gospels where Jesus is just simply unable to perform miracles if people don't have enough faith. So they bring him to Jesus, he touches him, and when he does, the guy sees a little bit of an image in his head, he's starting to see, and you almost have to believe that his faith increases like a thousandfold. Amen. Yeah. You, know, you know, because now he's saying, oh, wait a minute, I'm actually starting to see something. This guy might actually be able to heal me. And once he has that faith, Jesus is able to lay his hands on him a second time, and now it, it takes hold. And I think the other part about that is we can think about that sort of figuratively in terms of restoring, because it's possible also that this guy had faith originally, and he lost it, mm. and then his faith was brought back. His faith was restored by Jesus' presence. And so uh, I think the message for us today is to have the faith that Jesus actually can heal us. Um, he'll restore us back to be the people God intended us to be if we have enough faith in that and we allow him to heal us. Mm-mm-mm. What a great insight. I love that and love that pointing out, too, that he was probably brought along, not mm. no, maybe not willingly, certainly not the one running after Jesus, but being led there. So love that. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much, Deacon Dan. You're welcome. Have a great day. You too. Thank you. I can't wait till next week. We yeah, are always again. good. <laughs> Love our Wednesdays. Thanks for joining us today on Morning Offering. Teresa Tamio's Catholic Connection coming up next here on Annunciation Radio.